I began working in Somalia in 2011, um, covering what was at that time the worst famine the country had faced in 25 years. Today, we're in the midst, a famine is once again knocking at Somalia's door. Um, they're in the midst of a horrific humanitarian crisis, the worst drought in 40 years. What I've seen in that interim is the weather becoming more erratic, temperatures rising. Drought went from being, you know, something that happened once a decade to happening almost every year at a pace that people just can't recover from. And so I think it's really, it's not only transforming the environment, but it's really leading to the end of a way of life and culture for the people of Somalia. Where Alain was um, started with this idea of how do we look at the climate security nexus. Um, Somalia was a natural place to explore because it's probably the country on the planet most vulnerable to the climate crisis. It's where we're seeing the impacts of dramatic environmental change playing out first. The way into this particular project was actually the discovery of uh, an archive of photography, about 10,000 images taken from the only comprehensive land survey ever created in Somalia. This was in the 70s and 80s, so the photographs became a way to look at how dramatically the land had been transformed um, in, in less than a generation. So we scanned these images, brought them with us to Somalia, Somaliland, Puntland, um, and then would go around trying to find you know, that exact mountainscape or exactly the same location where the images had been shot. And then I would re-photograph those places. And so places looked completely uh, different. Um, but the story really began to shift because we met people along the way. And, and it was their stories, their challenges, the ways in which their lives were being transformed that really became the heart of this project. I really wanted to look at how intimate the ties are between Somalis and their land. It's primarily pastoral society. 90% of people there live by herding their camels and goats and sheep. And so I wanted to, to capture that context um, and to situate people, I think, appropriately as, as a part of the natural world um, and the ways in which it's being transformed. Or one of the choices I made in the creation of Where Our Land Was, was uh, to bring film into the process. Um, so while I was in the field, I worked with the Leica M6, and it was just an amazing opportunity to kind of slow down, to feel the texture of the landscape around me, to move at a different pace. And I really felt like that created a different kind of engagement with the storytelling. Somalia is not a place you can move quickly anyway. And so it felt like a really good fit for the environment, it allowed me to engage with people in a different way. Um, and I think it also just, that quality of unknowing, of sort of putting your roll of film away and you don't know what it is for weeks to come, in my case, um, it, it pushes you creatively to get everything that you possibly can from that scene. I think the most important thing that being a LOBA finalist did um, was really help amplify this call to, to raise an alarm, to recognize um, how quickly our world is being transformed, that we're in this moment now where our choices are dictating the future of our planet, the way, the life that our children and other future generations will inherit, and really to recognize our role and how interconnected we are to the planet and to the natural world. Part of what's so special for me about being a part of this exhibition is the way in which our works are in conversation with one another and, and sort of shining a spotlight on different aspects of the climate crisis from technology to how small we are in the context of our environment to I think what I hope my work does, which is really look at the sort of personal and intimate ties we have to the land um, and how when it is transformed, our lives are transformed with it.